Hello, this is Bishop William J. Denninger, Bishop of the Diocese of Grand Island, Nebraska. I encourage you to keep watching and supporting Pax Christi Multimedia, which is a lay apostolate founded in Grand Island, Nebraska. Its mission is to spread the gospel through mass media, including television, radio, press, internet, and film production, all in absolute union with the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. I give my blessing to Pax Christi Multimedia through the intercession of our Mother Mary, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, I'm Jessica McGinley from St. Nicholas Parish in Valentine, and I invite you to watch your Catholic show, On Fire. Pax Christi Multimedia presents On Fire, powerful preaching of the Word of God. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Oscar Arrivas. Welcome to your show, On Fire, Powerful Preaching of the Word of God. Today we have a wonderful show for you. We have Michael Davis, who is Director of Lay Ministry for the Diocese of Grand Island, Nebraska. Welcome to our show, Mike. Thank you so much, Oscar, and it's a real pleasure and a blessing to be with you today. Thank you very much. And we have a, a great show, Stewards of the Gifts, it's, it's so beautiful what we were sharing before yes. here, Michael. And we have uh, several scripture passages that, that we're going to use. One of the things that we always like to interview people that are here for the first time, so we want us to, for you to share a little bit, you know, take a minute, minute and a half to share a little bit about your background, where you're from, how you, if you came into the Catholic faith, if you've always been Catholic your whole life, um, just share a little bit of, about yourself. Yes, Oscar. Uh, I was born at, in Ogallala into St. Luke's Parish. So okay. I am, as they say, a cradle Catholic. And I've been so blessed throughout my life uh, to always be within the faith. And so I love the Catholic Church, uh, I love Jesus, and I am so grateful uh, to have an opportunity to be on your program. I'm seven of nine children. What a and blessing. so for about, yes, it's a blessing. And I have lots of nieces and nephews. I'm married to the lovely Joan, and I have a daughter, Elizabeth, in the Catholic schools in North Platte. And I really enjoy serving uh, good Bishop Denninger and the people of the Diocese of Grand Island. So it's, it's great. Thank you for being on our show. Thank you for traveling this morning. We appreciate it that you got up early to, to be here on the show. And we say hi to all the people in Ogallala. Yes. Too. So let's go ahead and begin this wonderful uh, show that we have uh, for our brothers and sisters today called Stewards of the gifts. Let's go ahead and, and begin with scripture. We have Sirach. Yes, our first scripture, Oscar, is taken from the wisdom of Ben Sirach. It's the book of Sirach. And he's advising us to not come before the Lord empty-handed. God okay. has gifted us with so much in our lives. And sometimes it's kind of hard to recognize uh, when we're going through some hard times, Oscar, and you know, we all have those difficulties and those anxieties, mm -hmm. but I think at any moment we can stop and think about all the glorious gifts that God has given us uh, in the people that He's given us to love, in our families, uh, in creation, and most notably, of course, in the Holy Eucharist mm -hmm. and in the mm -hmm. sacraments of the church. Mm -hmm. So, if I may, uh, let's uh, read from Sirach, okay. chapter 35, verse 4. Appear not before the Lord empty-handed, for all that you offer is in full fulfillment of the precepts. The just man's offerings enriches the altar and rises as a sweet odor before the Most High. The just man's sacrifice is most pleasing, nor will it ever be forgotten. And this is where really key, Oscar, is that uh, as we respond to the generosity of God, God is the ultimate giver, that we respond with a heart and a spirit of generosity uh, in, in giving back those gifts, because all really is gift. So then it just closes here uh, in this passage, Oscar, give to the Most High as He has given to you, generously from your own means. And I think this is really key, because uh, just like in Luke, which we'll reference later, the widow's mite, 
God honors every free will gift from us when we give it not begrudgingly. Whether it's the generous benefactor who provides this beautiful facility for Pax Christi, or if uh, a widow gives five dollars, uh, you know, uh -huh. to Catholic Relief Services, they're all equally beautiful and honored by God. And it, it really matters how we give, because we could give, you know, a million dollars, but if we do it just to give it so we get tax credits oh, or, you know, it, right. it's like you said, it's that widow that gave that, like it talks about in scripture, that gave all that she had, yes. but gave it out of love. Yes. And Mother Teresa said, do little things with great love. Absolutely. And uh, we did, you know, reference our, our treasure, but more importantly, giving of ourselves, uh, you know, to uplift someone that's around us, to, to go outside of ourselves and to be compassionate, to be merciful, to, to be that heart and that spirit, the hands and the feet of Christ. That's what the Lord calls us to do. And then really, the, the treasure and the resources that God's gifted us with, that's really secondary. The true heart of a steward is acting out of that generous response of gratitude, you know, all praise and thanksgiving to God our Father. And so then it just activates in us to be a steward, a caretaker of the gift and, and to give back. It's, it's so beautiful. We have another scripture passage yes. that we're going to Yes, and, and this is from um, Matthew. And uh, this is, I want to take a reflection on, um, and I think it just passed by, but Joseph of Arimathea, there are great uh, images and models of stewards uh, in the Gospels. And Joseph of Arimathea, he was, if you will, a quiet uh, believer in Jesus and his teachings. He was a, a, a counselor, a rich man. He was in the Sanhedrin, but he kind of laid back. I mean, he, did, he wasn't really overt. He was a, a, a closet follower, if you will, of Jesus. And yet, at that right proper moment in time, when our beloved Lord was crucified and his body was laying there and he needed to be uh, buried with honor and dignity, Joseph because of his position and his resources, he went to Pilate. No one else would have been admitted into the court of Pilate. But since he was a wealthy uh, member of the Sanhedrin and a Jew, he could do that. So he was able to uh, get the body of Christ. They say he craved the body of Christ. And then he and Nicodemus, uh, who brought the, the, the myrrh and the, and the burial linens, mm -hmm. they lovingly uh, prepared our Lord Jesus for his burial and he provided the tomb. So I just think that uh, Joseph is, uh, of Arimathea is a beautiful example of how we're all in a, in a position that no one else is in, and that when the Lord calls on us, that we as stewards of the gift can act out of those resources, those relationships, and do something that no one else can do. And that is really the essence of the message today to, to all of us, to me and, and to the viewers. That, you know, God is calling you in your place and your position to give of yourself, of your resources, and, and to leverage those resources for the glory of God, building up the kingdom of God. And sometimes we think that we have to do great things. Yes. You know, the, we want to change the world yes. and we want to be, uh, we want to bilocate and trilocate. <laughs> and, uh, yes. you know, it's, it, it's not necessary. The Lord gives us gifts. And sometimes it's you know, understanding what gifts we have, because some people might be watching right now or listening right. on, on Catholic radio and saying, but I don't have any gifts. You know, Mike, how, how do we discover those gifts? Prayer. Uh, that is the fundamental um, touchstone of every disciple of Jesus Christ, every Catholic, every Christian. Take it to prayer and God will reveal to you the Holy Spirit what particular gifts He's going to grow in you and wants you to exercise. And you're, you're so right, Oscar. We all have something to offer. And so we get into this competitive mode. And it's, it's not to look, you know, uh, I so much am grateful for uh, the lay apostolate of Pax Christi Media. Mm -hmm. But that's you and your brothers and sisters exercising this gift. Yeah. That's not my gift. Do you see what I mean? So, so we don't look in uh, jealousy. We say, you know, God, what is it that you want me to do with these people that you've put into my life, uh, this parish community, these coworkers? Yes. So on here, it talks about in the scripture, like you said in, in Matthew, 
um, chapter 27, uh, yes. verses 57. Uh, let's go ahead and read a little bit yes. about this. When it was evening, there was a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and our mother Mary, uh, remained there facing the tomb. Actually, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, wasn't there, but it's the three Marys. So I thought I might mention that because I get mixed up sometimes, Oscar, about the three Marys. So yes, he, he took his very own tomb and he offered it up. So, you know, sometimes God, or often God, gives us a resource that we need to just give away, you know? <laughs> Like the extra shirts that we have in our closet or the extra uh, exactly. pair of pants uh, and shoes and anything like that. I, I've heard this mentioned before, a, a Catholic uh, priest that says, you know, if you don't use it for six months, give it away. Yes. You don't need it. And, and sometimes in America, that's a problem that we have with, with wanting more stuff and yes. more stuff and more stuff. And we become slaves yes. of that when we should be given. Everything is given to us yes. from the Lord. You yes. know, 100% is given from the Lord. Yes. And there's a story that, uh, that I love to share also. You know, I, I'd like to propose a business to you. It basically says, you know, I'll let you keep 90% of what you make. Let's start a business, Mike. I'll right. offer you this offer. Absolutely. Let, let's start a business, you know. Out I'm of in. Every, out of every $100, I'll give you $90, and I get to keep 10 What do you think about that business of the profits? Well, that's very scriptural because you're asking me to tithe exactly you know and that is absolutely the essence of of what christ calls us to do is to minimally give 10 percent and you and you're referring uh to our treasure you know but uh in kind of going back to this i think that uh we as christians need to not only think of the treasure that we have but i think it really does go back to uh, knowing that God created the world, created us in His image and likeness, and that He calls upon us to be co-creators, if you will, through our free will, to help build up the kingdom and this earthly kingdom uh, in God's image and likeness. Can you explain a little more about being co-creators with God? Because that is, those are powerful words. Yes, they are. And I say those with, you know, uh, humility. Um, you know, in Genesis, you know, whenever God speaks, His Word brings forth creation. And we have a beautiful example of this in Genesis, the creation story. You know, uh, the Lord spoke over the waters, you know, and then it began teeming with every creature you can imagine, uh, you know, God's Word. So we have that repetitively through there. And then God created uh, woman and man in His image and likeness. So God's Word spoke forth. And then if we jump ahead a little bit um, to uh, the angel Gabriel speaking to Mary, you know, God's word mm -hmm. became incarnate. God spoke and Jesus was formed in Mary's womb. But where we have fallen as stewards is in the original, um, in our creation story, when we ate from the tree of knowledge and we disobeyed God, you know, there were several falls or separations that happened. The, the sin of that, and one of them was man was separated from the harmony of the earth. Uh, God sentenced, if you will, man to toil by the sweat of our brow mm -hmm. uh, to, to make our living. And so when we respond to God through the Holy Spirit, we help to restore some of that order and that ease of relating with our world, our work, our resources, uh, the soil that we're called to till, so to speak, mm -hmm. in whatever our work may be. It's, it's such a wonderful topic. And, you know, as you know, time flies by. So yes. we're about ready to finish our first segment. And we'll be coming back with Michael Davis. He's the director of lay ministry in the Diocese of Grand Island, Nebraska. Thank you so much for Thank being you, here Oscar. with us on our show, On Fire, Powerful Preaching of the Word of God. We'll be right back. Most of us can recall a childhood memory of innocence and a peace that only comes from God. Yet with our busy schedules today, many families don't attend church weekly or spend much time teaching their children about God. 
so many families now are burdened by financial and family challenges, substance abuse, and other worries. But there is hope. Studies show that people who pray regularly and practice their Christian faith are less stressed, financially stable, more compassionate, optimistic, healthier, and happier. Experience a positive difference in your life and for your family by coming home to your parish. Learn more by visiting catholicscomehome.org today. Here you may find answers to your questions and discover how Jesus and the sacraments will bless your family. There's no pressure or risk. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Welcome back to our second segment of On Fire, powerful preaching of the Word of God. We have Michael Davis, who's Director of Lay Ministry for the Diocese of Grand Island with us here today on a beautiful topic, Stewards of the Gift. And there's so many scriptures, like you were saying, yes. it really, uh, you really got my attention. We were talking before we started the show that you said that Jesus uses in over 50% of the parables, he talks about money, is that yes. correct? Yes, yeah, I think so often we're shy in talking about our resources, our treasures uh, that God's giving us. But, you know, Jesus set the model in his teaching. Uh, over 50% of his parables deal with our relationship with money and possessions and position even and power. So with our Lord and Savior, you know, directing us in that way, we need to be cognizant and aware that we really need to do an examination of, of our relationship to our possessions because it's right there in Scripture in all the parables. And we'll do this like a suspense movie. We're going to come back yes. to this after a little bit. First, we have to touch up. Yes. We're going to uh, close the Scripture passage of Genesis yes. uh, that we're talking about the, the creation and the, the, and the fall of. That's right. It, you know, the title of our program, Oscar, is Stewards of the Gift. And the ultimate gift is in the beginning, and that comes with God's Word. So we were referencing in our uh, Genesis. So we're familiar with the creation story of how God, were, God spoke it and it came into mm -hmm. life. So God is always speaking the world into life and, and speaking us into life. But then we get to the sadness of our separation from God. Uh, through our disobedience, you know, the first uh, woman and man in the Garden of Eden, you know, uh, approaching and going to that tree of knowledge and taking of that tree of knowledge and disobeying God. So then the fall takes place. So I want to reference to um, chapter 3 in Genesis, and this has to do with um, how we're called to be stewards now in our time and place okay. in the new creation that Jesus is creating. Because as God set it up in the Garden of Eden, we had a harmonious relationship with, with creation. Uh, it was easy. Our relationship with woman uh, with, was, was beautiful. Our relationship to the earth was easy. You know, all of the fruits that we needed, the sustenance mm -hmm. that we needed, we didn't even need clothing to wear because the elements would not harm us. Well, with the fall, Jesus, or God uh, sentenced us to this existence. And so I'm just going to read from chapter 3. And he's, uh, God is speaking to man and his relationship with the earth. Cursed be the ground because of you, and toil shall you eat its yield. All the days of your life, thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken, for you are dirt, and to dirt you shall return. Now these are <laughs> tough words, and uh, I, there's a saying from a, a good Jewish rabbi that we should all carry around two pieces of paper, Oscar. And on one of those pieces of paper should be, for you the world was created, the beloved. So we keep that in one pocket. And on the other pocket, <laughs> Uh, you came from dirt until dust you shall return. You know, so that's that balance between knowing that God is the giver of the gift, God is the giver of life, and that we are to respond to God for eternal life. So this sets up our current uh, relationship to how we toil and strive and sweat to make our living. And if we want that to be easier, 
I don't just suggest, it's in Scripture, we need to give it back to God and see it as gift. Because truly, when the times that I'm attempting to respond to God's call to be a good steward of the relationships and the resources that God has blessed with me with, with uh, perhaps the, the particular gifts I may have, mm -hmm. it's easy. I think we can all think of times, you know, when we just said, yes, God, like uh, Mary's Magnificat. Uh, she didn't ask a whole lot of questions when the angel, angel Gabriel came, you know, in the canticle of Mary. It's, uh, let it be done to me according to your will. And I think if we just do that Magnificat, mm -hmm. yes, God really does bless it. So that sets us up for uh, an example then in the Gospel of Luke or where, where Jesus the good Jewish rabbi and our Lord and Savior really does uh, enumerate uh, what our relationship with money ought to be. So we're in Luke chapters 19 and 20, and just within the span of those two short chapters are four references to money. Okay, let's go ahead and, and read from that. Okay, very good. Um, and it's almost like a little litany of, of, of Jesus saying, you know, Get at your head straight with money, please, y'all. First of all, the cleansing of the temple. Then Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, if you don't think that Jesus was not divine and human, just read this. He was angry. He kicked over their tables. He was not polite, was he? Holy anger. He, he was, yeah, he was. Holy he, anger. Holy anger, yes. And uh, every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him de to death. And there's a real sadness in this because we do know that, like Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin, there were Jews who stepped back and thought, you know, perhaps this man really does have something to say. Maybe he is of mm -hmm. God. So I think this is where our human ego blinds us to possessions. You know, they wanted power and control of this temple area, and they were misusing it, you know, to sell pigeons and sacrifices mm -hmm. at the temple. Uh, you know, so they didn't examine. So we're called as stewards to examine uh, our attitude towards others and our attitudes towards resources. So there's the cleansing of the temple. That's one. Then the next one is the parable of the tenant farmers. Uh, and that is chapter 20, verse 9. Then he proceeded to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to a tenant farmer, and then went on a journey for a long time. I think we can pause there. God gave us a vineyard in the beginning. Even when he cast us out of the Garden of Eden, we're still stewards of that vineyard, the earth. And it seems that God, he's not so much gone, but he seems somewhat distant. Mm -hmm. to us, God the Father, but yet he still gifted us with this vineyard that we're to, we're to tend. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenant farmers to receive some of the produce of the vineyard, but they beat the servant and sent him away empty-handed. And, and you know, many homilists would look at this, and, and it is uh, a representation of Jesus coming mm -hmm. back into the vineyard of the world uh, to um, get us to recognize God. So here, you know, I think we're pretty familiar with this, but it's still about stewardship. Uh, how do we um, be good stewards of whatever the vineyard that God has, has, has gifted us with? So there's two more, actually, yes. that you would like to speak about. And then the other one, of course, is paying taxes to the, to the oh, emperor. Taxes. Yes, taxes. Yes, you know, absolutely. So we yeah. have to, as Catholics, we have to be fair on our taxes too? Absolutely. You know, do not be dishonest. And I'll, uh, believe me, Oscar and friends, I have to ask myself ethical questions every day, you know, because there are things that I think perhaps, oh, well, I could fudge on that a little bit and, you know, no one would ever know. But, you know, if we're going to be truly Christian and truly ethical, mm -hmm. you know, my memory isn't as good as it used to be. So if I just am honest all the time, attempt to be honest and transparent, I don't have to remember much of anything <laughs> because it's, it's all open. I, I did it in sincerity and honesty, and certainly I make mistakes, but I can explain it, you know. And, and so, some, yeah. some of us, no one will find out, well, God is always watching oh, us. Oh, yes. The Lord knows, and who cares about the people? You know, we have, to, when we have reckoning, when we come before the Lord, 
he's going to ask, you know, this is what you did to remember this time that n no one knew about this? Well, I knew about it. And it's answering to the Lord. And yes. out of love, we have to live a Christian life that's, you know, transparent, yes. as we would say. So let's go ahead yeah. and... And that's where we have the gift of, of uh, uh, confession and reconciliation. Thanks. You know, when I stumble, you. you know, it's like the monastery. They ask, they ask the monk, you know, what do you do all day long? We fall and we get up. We fall and we get up. And that's what we do. So then um, paying taxes to the emperor, uh, of course, uh, you know, he pulls out the coin, you know, whose, whose image is on this coin? And it's, of course, Caesar. So give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God, Oscar and Michael and everyone, what is God's. You know, the 10%, which is minimal. Mm -hmm. um, so then we have, uh, then it, as it, it proceeds on, just at the beginning of chapter 21, is the widow's might. And I will read that one. When he looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury. And he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty has offered her whole livelihood. Now, if I can um, get a little personal here for a moment, um, my mom, uh, mother of nine children, uh, has very modest means. And I can remember a number of years ago, the parish priest coming to her and saying, you know, maybe you're giving too much. She said, no, this is what I'm called to give. So I think perhaps that's a, mm -hmm. an example. And, and that's beautiful. You know, we'd like to keep on talking here and, and do the a three-hour show instead of a 30-minute show. And we appreciate it so much that you've been here with us, Michael. It's, it's been an honor for Pax Christi. Thank you. Uh, thank you for supporting this ministry. And we'd like to, to finalize um, with a prayer. We'd like to ask you if you could pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are watching this show, that are listening on the radio. Um, if we could, could conclude with a prayer. Yes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We praise and glorify you, Heavenly Father, uh, the giver of life, the giver of, of all gifts. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for bringing him into the world to redeem us and to pull us back into your love and to your grace. And we just ask through the intercession of the Holy Spirit uh, that you might open our hearts as stewards of the gift and let us be a grateful people, a joyful people, that are always recognizing the gifts within us and those around us and help us to uh, be good stewards, good givers, good caretakers, and also to receive in humility and love and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.